You are now listening to the J Ports Experience. Listen free on iTunes or at theandybearshow.com. Now, here's Jay! Yo! What is the word, people? Welcome to another action packed edition of the J Porks Experience. I'm Jay Porks, with me as always on the other side of the glass, making sure this is a well oiled podcast machine. Every week, the ever popular nobody. A few things to get to, got some new music. But first, these four things I know are true. South Park wins. Robert Plant was rocking out in Williamsburg the other day. Katy Perry is going to headline the Super Bowl. And Johnny Ramone was jealous of the offspring. We'll start with the winners, the winners of the week. And that would be South Park. Let's talk about it. Okay, so as you know, as you know, South Park this week had an episode where the subplot included Stan Marsh's father, Randy Marsh. He's actually Lord. So so he can use the, the women's bathroom at work because it's a transgender. Because Cartman, the episode starts, Cartman is at the bus stop. He's mad. No one knows why he's mad. Then when he goes to lunch and he tries to go to the bathroom, the stall is packed, and he gets mad, so he puts a bow on his head. He goes in the girls' bathroom, and then he says to the principal, I'm transgender. You can't, you can't tell me where, where I can go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom where I define with whatever gender I am. And it creates a, a conundrum at the school, and they have, to bu- they have to build another bathroom, which raises a bigger question to me. I'm all about, I'm all about transgender equality and all that, but where are they going to go to the bathroom? I want to know. I want to know. But anyway, last week, let's back up to to a week ago, where at the end of a South Park episode, the kids were throwing a party, and Lord was the musical guest at the party, and it turns out Randy, Stan's dad, was playing Lord. So So then Spin Magazine... Spin Magazine ha- um, didn't take it so well. They were like, what did Lord do? You know, they totally missed the joke. South Park wasn't making fun of Lord. They were making fun of Randy. So this week, when when um, Stan's mom finds fishnets in, uh, in Randy's pants, he calls up his boss and he says, I can't do it anymore. You know, it's like the lead singer, the, the lead the lead uh, henchman at one of these record companies. So it turns out Randy does it with auto-tune. And the subplot is a Spin Magazine reporter going around South Park asking why is Lord also a geologist? Why Why does Lord also keep her day job? And the Spin reporter had all the characteristics of a of a real life spin reporter. He was old, he was out of touch, he was wearing a derby. You know, it said press on it. So it was just it was great to see that Spin magazine took shots at South Park six days, and then six days later, South Park said, You know what? Fuck you, we're gonna make fun of you in the episode. Here's the thing. Most cartoons take about six to eight months to, to even make. But since South Park's animation is so non-high tech, they, can, they pump out episodes in six days. There's actually a documentary called Six Days to Air, the, Ma- six days to Air, the Making of South Park. So ag- and then Spin came out with the article... You know, South Park makes fun of an overly sensitive music publication in last night's episode. The reason why I laugh when Spin gets trashed is because Spin does things... You hear me complain about websites that generate traffic with clickbait titles. 
things that make you want to click it, and then they're totally not even about that. Spin doesn't need to do that. Spin is spin. They have an actual magazine on in stores. I don't think spin needs to be commenting on what's going on on the latest episode of South Park. I don't think it matters. Instead of just laughing and thinking it's funny, everyone's got to take this social justice warrior stance, and I hate to say that. I hate to say that because that's all over the YouTube comments. They weren't making fun of Lord. They actually don't, they actually like Lord. Because there was that speech with, um, people, you know, Stan's mom said, you know, people should be able to she said, "Kid, young kids like Lord because they're used to getting tits and crotch stuffed in their face, and they they're sick of it. And Lord doesn't do that. And then Lord tweeted from her hotel room. She's like, I've been the subject of two South Park episodes, and I think that's weird and cool. She also said, I know I have a mustache, but I didn't think it was that prominent. Which is great. That's hilarious." And if she wants to make some music I like, I'd be totally down with her. In the meantime, I will continue disliking her music, enjoying South Park, and watching Spin get trashed. It's like when Rolling Stone has articles about the NFL. I don't need to hear it from Rolling Stone. I'll go to, I want to hear music from Rolling Stone magazine. I want to read music from Spin magazine. I don't want to read their commentary on social issues. It doesn't matter to me. I watch South Park because it's funny. I was actually, I swear this is true. I was having a veggie burger. I know, I know. People think it's crazy. But it was good. I was eating a veggie burger and I turned to the TV and I, I know, in my living room. And I noticed the new episode of South Park was on. And then when the, when the old guy, there's this old guy shows up at um, the Broflovsky re re residence, Stan. Not Stan. Kyle's Kyle's house. Guy knocks on the door. Yes? Hey, I'm with Spin Magazine, see? Like it's one of those fifties like kind of voices. It's fucking amazing. So if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen the South Park, listen, it's if you like South Park, you'll enjoy it. I know people who enjoyed this episode and they never heard of Spin Magazine. I enjoyed it. Because of that little subplot. And everyone who, who has ever blogged about music at least one time can appreciate that. Can appreciate how out of touch that guy is. And can appreciate how out of touch Spin Magazine is when it comes to cartoon satire. <coughs> Amazing. I'll link it up in the notes. If Again, I mean... Where... Where are transgender people going to go to the bathroom? And no one is saying that Lord is transgender. It's not about that. Randy Marsh pretends he's Lord so he can take a shit in the in the girls' bathroom at work because this guy Larry used to blow up the bathroom. It's not a Lord. Th people shouldn't say why is Lord being trash. Lord is not being trashed. <laughs> they just you see they they. It's not like Kanye West where they where he ended up being a gay fish. It's not like that. They never depicted Lord. They just said Randy Marsh was Lord. And also what came was one of the greatest songs, Push, also known as Feeling Good on a Wednesday. I'm listening to that every day. I'm feeling good on a Wednesday with sparkling thoughts. It's fucking amazing. It's amazing. It sounds like uh It sounds like Lord. Lord said it was Saya. So for somebody who hates this chick, I talk a lot about her. Help me unload the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To say that Lord has a good sense of humor about it means you missed the point. Because in an interview, she was singing along. To, she was saying, I am Lord, yeah, 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 like the song says. She doesn't need a... She, if she likes South Park, she'll enjoy that. They're not poking fun at her. 
anyway, I can go on about this forever because I just... This episode was on seven days ago, and I'm still hyped about it. As soon as it went off, I said, podcast! That's exactly what I said. I could have recorded this on two, on Thursday, but I chose not to. I chose to wait to m- New Music Tuesday. And I just want to say this really fast. I follow three. I follow 433 people on Twitter. A lot of them write for music blogs or love music blogs. It's as of 11:27 Eastern Time. You couldn't have listened to four albums and and processed them into your brain. Oh, this is good. I love Tuesdays. New Music Tuesday. Yeah, I get it. Okay, new music is coming out that you get to enjoy. Pre-noon, I doubt that you've listened to five or six records already. You haven't done that. And if you do, somebody call your boss and, and tell them that you're not working. Listen, I love music as much as the next person. I don't have that much time on my hands. I'm sorry that my I don't have a car and I'm not driving around all day. I'm sorry that my phone battery is more important to me where I don't want to bring headphones and listen to music. Because I don't want to kill my phone when I don't have a charger on me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that's the case. I'm different than you. New album comes out. I get around to listening to it. The other day, Robert Plant. Moving on here. The other day, Robert Plant, lead singer of Led Zeppelin. Well, I guess former. Because they're, not get, they're never going to tour again. Because Robert Plant doesn't need Led Zeppelin. He's Robert Plant. He had the number one album with Alison Krauss. But anyway. Robert Plant was on Colbert, and he performed that he passed Colbert a joint or something. But I noticed the other day, Brooklyn Bowl tweeted out Robert Plant's playing to, Robert Plant and the Sensational Space Shifters, or whatever the fuck his band's name is, are playing tonight. Doors open at 10.30. That was a Thursday. I was available. So I, I saw that. And I said, wow, that's really cool. Robert Plant is going to play the Brooklyn fucking Bowl. That's like the, that's got to be the biggest show that, that's the biggest show they've ever had. It has to be. I mean, in terms of, like, unless Paul McCartney plays the Brooklyn Bowl, that's pretty much it. So the next morning I woke up and I said, oh, I'm going to check out some of that video. And there is some pretty cool Pretty cool version, folky versions of Black Dog and, and Cashmere. Whole lot of love. I'll share them. I'll share them on the notes. But um, something I noticed that bothered the crap out of me. Doors, doors opened for this show at 10:30. Robert Plant didn't go on stage till after midnight. Now. I understand it's rock and roll. I understand all that. But me personally, this is the guy who was walking out of whose show at Terminal 5, Kasabian at Terminal 5 a couple of weeks ago, I was walking out of there at 10.30. If I looked at my cell phone and it was midnight and the artist I came to see wasn't on the stage... That would irritate me to no end. I would be so pissed off at that. Are you kidding? I I understand it's rock and roll. People got jobs. Especially, like, I was off on... I'm off on Thursday. So, actually, there was two shows going on in Brooklyn I wanted to see. I wanted to see Polaris... The, the Pete and Pete band, they were playing at the Bell House in Brooklyn. I want to call that Gowanus, but it, I don't really, it doesn't really have a town. And we had Robert Plant at the Brooklyn Bowl in Williamsburg. Polaris, the doors were at 10 o'clock. Show at 11. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have an actual job on Friday, and even though it's 5 o'clock at night... I can't be out to the wee hours, because with me, with Jay Porks, this guy right here, it's not just going to a show, going home, going to sleep. I do my thing when I get home. And the reason is, 
People always tell me, Jay, you don't have to post when you get home. You can go to sleep and do it in the morning. I could do that, but I lose what I want to say. I need to still be coming down from the energy from the show while bringing it to you in order to bring it to you exactly how I want. I think there was one time where I waited till the next day to do it, and I didn't like it at all. I hated it. Or I've, well, the first couple of times I may have tried to do it days later, and I, it's harder for me to do. It's harder for me to do. So, I mean, I just wish bands would play at normal times. I, I mean, and I get it. You're, you're Robert Plant. You're cool. And all the people in the audience are probably retired by now, so they don't have to worry about waking up early for, for work. I think my friend Lisa from Boston, or Mass, I'm not sure if it's actually Boston, it might be outside Boston, <clears throat> she commented on the video on Facebook, she's like, isn't that way past Robert Plant's bedtime? I'm thinking, yeah, but he probably took a nap from 6 to 10, he was probably sleeping until 10.30, doors open, alright, I'm up, I'm up, mate, or whatever country he's from, however they sound, I can't do the accent. I mean, as epic as that show could have been, you're pissing me off going on after midnight. I have a job. And this is more reason, I mean, listen, I wish, I pray to God that I, I mean, you know, I wish that I can live, that I lived like in the city or in Brooklyn in a place that was, you know, 15 minutes from the venue. Then, leaving a show at 2 a.m. wouldn't make a difference if I get home at 2.30, because that's the same time I get home now anyway. But think about that. Two shows that I couldn't go to because I didn't want to go home. I didn't want to be getting home at 3, 4 in the morning because I live in crummy Staten Island. And not one person on this fucking island enjoys the same music as me. It's insane. It's like the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, I don't have any. Hey, buddy, like, like here's an, it, let's just say Andy lived on my block. You know, th this podcast network I'm on, the guy who, like, started it, the guy who has the flagship show. Say Andy Deer lives on my block. I think he drives. I think he does. Like, if Robert Plant was praying in Brooklyn, I'd be like, yo, Andy, you want to go to this? You know, and even if you responded with, I have no money, and I hit you with the, I'll pay for it, then we're, then we're there. But there's not one person. No, there is no last minute show things. I can't go to a last minute show, because nobody, nobody can get me there. Because it's too emotionally taxing. And Jay Maskus at the Bowery Ballroom sold out on Friday. So I guess that piece of paper that at work that I have on the board that says, anyone want to cover for me October 17th, I guess I can cross that off since I'm not going to that. You know, I don't want to sound all like responsible adult, but when you... When you're looking for work, you listening to this right now, whoever you are, from whatever walk of life you're at, when you were looking for work and you walked into a place and they ask you what days you can work, aren't your hours of availability all the time? I mean, unless you have a second job. If you have no, if you have no job, who goes... Since I've been working at, at my job right now for a year. There are people who've been working there for a month that I've asked to cover for me. And they, no, I can't. I have a party. No, I can't. I have this. They come into, they get a job with a list of date. Like, how can you not be available on a Friday night if you want to work in a restaurant? If you want to work in a restaurant, you have to be available on the weekend. That's the whole point 
You think people come out during the week unless there's a free pasta involved or a half price bottle of wine? Furthermore, like it shows who the boss is. Not to be a dick, my boss is a nice guy, but that might be his downfall. He's a nice guy. I used to work at Pizza Hut, and I'll never forget this. Where's Pam? Pam remembers. A new girl got hired. Uh, Gary Stern. Gary Stern was the boss, and he is the man. The man. I miss working for this guy. Even though he was scary as hell when I worked for him. Thinking back on it now, you know, at least he was a straight shooter. He didn't tell you one thing and mean another to see a reaction. Like, now I have bosses that act like, you know, Dr. House. They do things just to see how it will play in this and this and this and what effect it will have and what causes this. And Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So this new phone girl comes in. She comes into work. It's Friday night. Gary brings her to the back. And all I see is you see two people talking, but you don't hear anything. And what happens is you see a young girl get handed a shirt and a hat. And then you see about 30 seconds later, you see the shirt and the hat be ripped away from this girl. And then you see the girl walk out of the restaurant. Then Gary comes over like, what happened? She couldn't work tonight. That's it. That's what happens. If you're going to get a job, you need to be available. Those are the rules. So when the meat puppets come to Rough Trade Records on Halloween, and I'm there instead of at work, that's going to be a problem. I still have not gotten coverage for that. And as every day goes by where I don't have coverage... I get a little more pissy about it. I don't want to lose my job. And technically, if I can't get coverage for a Friday, how would I lose my job? Because if I can, if I was replaceable, if there was somebody who can work for me, I wouldn't need the coverage. I w it would be taken care of already. So I'm just like the manage, like a couple of the managers. One of the managers and my boss, like, they kind of think it's a joke. Like, I'm like, yeah, I need off on Halloween. The meat puppets are coming. Like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, you go get covered. Yeah, I'm not coming. I'm not coming to work that day. So, I'm sorry. And if I have to come to work that day, I got to tell you, things are really. Then the new job is coming. I'll just go get another job. Worked here a year. I have never, I don't get sick. I'm not one of those people that calls the morning of and says I can't come to work. I've never done that. Never. And I'm the laziest fuck out there. And I like this place. I just don't like the idea of not getting coverage. And the kid I work with, I work with this kid, Matt. He also goes to concerts, different ones than me, different music genres. But we have this, it's the same thing. Can you cover this day in three months? Because I'm about to buy these tickets. You know how hard it is? When you're a waiter to buy concert tickets, when you don't, like, when a show's on a Friday, and, yeah, you can get coverage for that day, but you're not sure if this person's still going to be working there in four months. Can't believe it. The game has changed. So, I don't want to go to shows... That start at midnight. And when I do go to shows, I just want them to be on days where I'm not working. So bands I like, feel free to come to town on Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, even Sundays. Now I'm off Sunday, which does absolutely nothing for me. Do you know what a guy with no video game console has to do on Sunday when you're off? You stare at the TV and you watch your crappy football team. By the way, 1-6, which I predicted they'd be 1-7 before the season started. Actually, I predicted they'd be 1-7 after they beat Oakland week one. 
and we can go back to the audio and play that. They'll be one and seven. Probably by the time you listen to this, because they're playing a Thursday night game. That's what a person has to do. You know how boring it is? I'd rather go to work and make $18 and clean. But no, they got a new girl who's available to work Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Nobody comes in on Monday because we're a restaurant. Wednesday is a dead day. And Thursday, no one needs coverage on Thursday. There's one server at a time during the week. I'm not letting you work Tuesday. F that. It's pasta night. Buy one pasta, get one free. And really quick, Katy Perry is going to headline the Super Bowl halftime show, which I'll watch on mute. I don't care. That body's amazing. And I'm not objectifying women. I'm just saying that she's attractive. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I like boobs. I'm sorry. They don't have to be big. They have to be nice. I love all these people tweeting about every album they've listened to today. Shut up. What else have we got? Also, Iggy Pop, really fast. Iggy Pop gave a lecture in at, at John P, at uh at the fourth annual John. He he gave the fourth annual John Peel address, something in in Europe with the BBC. Anyway, it included him saying, "The shit has really hit the fan over the subject thanks to you two and Apple." He blasted Bono and Co. for, quote, giving away music before it can flop in an effort to stay huge. Good times. Iggy Pop got up there with his glasses and he had on, like, a cardigan with no shirt on underneath. Showing off his ripped abs. He's a fucking beast. And he also said that Johnny Ramone one day, Johnny asked me one day, Iggy, don't you hate the offspring and the way they're so popular with that crap they play? That should be us. They stole from us. Uh. You mean like you stole from the Stooges? You mean like you stole from the Sex Pistols? And Iggy Pop responded, Not everybody is meant to be big. Not everybody big is any is is not everybody big is any good. Which may or may not indicated that Iggy Pop also doesn't like the offspring. I'll also have that article in the notes. That's at enemy.com. The Ramones were jealous of the offspring. That's what he said. That's what he said. We'll get some more music stuff back after this. Hey everybody, it's Andy from the Andy Dare Show here. Just want to say that I am super proud to have the Jay Porks experience be part of Dare Network. And if you want to keep my little podcast network completely free, all you got to do is go to theandydareshow.com, look on the right-hand side of the page, and you'll click on the Amazon banners for all your Amazon needs, and you'll tip your cap to the Jay Porks experience and all the fine broadcasting here on Dare Network. Also, be sure to follow Jay on Twitter at Jay Porks. Instagram at jporks and jporks.blogspot.com. Thank you so much for listening, and back to the jporks experience. And we're back. Real quick, I am like a pot of coffee in already today, so that's why I'm flying past things. But before we get into anything else, I'm going to get to the list of websites you need to go to to help keep me in business. First of all, as always, there's ConcertConfessions.com. That's for all your live music. News and reviews for the fans by the fans. I'll be honest with you. All three of the bands that our buddy Ms. Maciel saw at the House of Blues in Hollywood, I can't pronounce any of them. So I'm just going to link you up to it. That happened on October 2nd. and. Cool pics, cool video. 
lots of stuff up there. Click the Amazon ads when you're there because you're going to buy stuff anyway, right? And if you're a web designer and you want to assist me with a couple of things with Content Confessions, get at me. Hmm. Comes next. The Andy Deer Show.com. That's for all your Deer Network podcast needs. There's a new episode of the Tyler Kale Show. That's up. You can check that out. You can also check out the latest Andy Deer Show. Or you can check out the sultry tones of the Jay Porks experience. And click those Amazon. Click the ads all over that page, too. Why not? And of course, also there's ChristinaRocks.com. 89xradio.com every Sunday morning can get you the time warp. That's throwback alternative. Cool. It's a cool show. I tried to wake up early enough. I was not. The thing about being off Sunday is waking up early. If you can't get back to sleep, there's no point. She's got tons of cool stuff on her website, too. Including... She's got uh, Mor Morrissey performing on Italian TV, and she's also got Depeche Mode shared the trailer for Live in Berlin CD, CD DVD. And of course, the headlines every week are powered by Annie Quiet. And let's get to them, shall we? Well... Yesterday, even though today is New Music Tuesday, yesterday had its fair share of good music, of good new music. And it also fe it featured Zach De La Rocha, who is the lead singer of Rage Against the Machine, featuring him, he, fe he was featured on a track from the Run the Jewels collaboration, which is Kill a Mike and... Kill a Mike and who? What's his? Oh my god. Anyway, the album has a lot of features on it. The song is called Close Your Eyes and Count to Fuck. I have never heard a better title of an album in my life than Close Your Eyes and Count to Fuck. It's LP in Killer Mike. I knew it was LP. I almost said Alt J. Because I don't know the difference between those guys. But yeah, every Run the Jewels track I've turned on has been awesome. And this is no. There is no exception here with this one. This one is sick. Close your eyes and count to fuck. Yes. Also, there's new David Bowie. He has a marvelous new track called Sue. And in parentheses, or in a season of crime. Bowie is very weird, and that does not stop here. And also, Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds announced their new album, Chasing Yesterday, and it will be released March 2nd, 2015, as in a very long time from now. I liked the first album, and I'm like in this, the song that came out, what was which song came out? It was called In the Heat of the Moment. And you can check that out at Annie Quiet. I think I liked it on Facebook already. I'm going to click like again, just in case. So there's a new song from them. There's also, you can, Thurston Moore's solo record, New Day. A New Day is streaming now. Yeah, uh, no one all. The best day, I'm sorry. The best day. And you could stream it at The Guardian. The Guardian has it. The Sonic Youth founder and honorary East London resident may be the most famous for his experiments with strained guitar tunings and freeform noise. But his latest solo album, the 2010 Beck produced Demolished Thoughts, saw Thurston Moore reinvent himself as a more serene acoustic guitar singer songwriter. Acoustic singer songwriter. His fifth solo album, The Best Day, finds more returning to alternative rock in a more direct and aggressive form, harnessing his punk spirit with the white noise opener of de detonation as references to revolution. 
It sounds as a new existence in London has triggered an album of anti-authority and activism. The best day is out October 20th on Matador Records. But you can listen to it ahead of its release here at The Guardian. I haven't heard it yet, but I am going to check it out because that's a very promising paragraph about it. Just, just be honest with you there. It's a very promising paragraph about it. I am Lord, ya, ya, ya. How good is that? I'm so happy that that happened. Also, oh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm so glad I didn't get to this. I'm so glad I saw this. See, I feel like I feel like my brain is moving faster than my mouth could move. Here's the thing: if I, if I if I was able to do this every day, they wouldn't get short of the podcast. If I was able to do this every day, I would have the same amount of complaints every single day. All right. So as you know, this past year, Nirvana, Kiss, Peter Gabriel, Hall & Oates, Cat Stevens, and Linda Ronstadt all made it into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This year, the list makes us all feel a little old. With Green Day and Nine Inch Nails having their first go-around as being eligible for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. If Nirvana getting in made me feel old, Green Day being nominated makes me feel really old. I know they came out around the same time. Actually, they came out within a year of each other because this is the next year. It is 25 years. As the rule states, in order to be eligible for nomination, each artist must have released their first single or album in 1989 or earlier. That's 25 years. So how did Nirvana get in? Last year, because Bleach came out in 89. Anyway. Green Day, Nine Inch Nails, N.W.A., The Smiths, Lou Reed, Solo, he's already in with Velvet Underground, Sting, Solo, who's already in with The Police, Paul Butterfield Blues Band, Kraftwerk, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Bill Withers. Joan Jett and N.W.A. have appeared on previous ballots. And you can vote at Rolling Stone up until December 9th. Wow. And the induction ceremony is in Cleveland, so nobody will be there. Because I know I've said this before. What the fuck is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame doing in Cleveland? What's in Cleveland? Whatever. <laughs> Think about these words. Nine Inch Nails, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers. That's, I know that they're a huge band, but that just has a weird ring to it. Nine Inch Nails, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers. Furthermore, I don't think... Now, I don't know I don't know what your feelings are about this, but Lou Reed is in with the Velvet Underground. I don't why why is he so why does he get to go in solo too? I know he had solo albums and I know that technically Lou Reed solo is different from the Velvet Underground. It could be totally different, but he's already in. Why are we I mean, if you're in with a band, it should be like the baseball hall of fame where there's like um a veterans committee. And people vote. It should be a separate thing. Sting is in with the police. Well, I mean, he should... That should be separate. They're already in. Why are they gonna, they're going to take up more space? I can't believe Joan Jett and the Blackhearts aren't in. That's weird. Craft work. Green, think about that. Green Day, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers. 
And I don't get it. Why does Johnny? Why does jo- why is Johnny Ramone mad at the Offspring, but he's not mad at Green Day? Because Green Day came out before the Offspring. Cray Cray, all day day. The Smiths. Uh, I hate talking about Morrissey, but I, I will say this: they, if they get in, they're not gonna sh- play. They're not gonna show up. Morrissey's only gonna show up if the rest of the band doesn't show up. The rest of the band's only gonna show up if Morrissey doesn't show up. I don't think Johnny Marr cares that much. He's releasing solo albums, and I saw him playing with Dinosaur Jr. that time. That awkward moment where Johnny Marr plays with Dinosaur Jr. and you're at Terminal 5 taping. The Foo Fighters were on Letterman on Monday, and they played War Pigs. They're going to be on all week. I don't care, but I know you do. So, you know, you can... If you want to check that out, turn on channel 2 because I'm not wasting a link on it. There's a new track from the Scre- from Sh- Screaming Females. They're awesome. It's a family-friendly new track called Wishing Well. And Pink Floyd last week had a new single, Louder Than Words. And it was... The headline says Pink Floyd recycles the past with the first song in 20 years. So all of that and more can be found at AnnieQuiet.com. Well, not the thirst and more, but it doesn't matter where it links to. All of the headlines are always powered by AnnieQuiet. Okay, what else we got? I know. Comic-Con. That's what I can talk about. You know, just let me tell you something. By the time I make it to Comic-Con, that shit's not going to be cool anymore. I promise you. Because I ruin everything. By the time I show up to places, like I didn't watch Breaking Bad until like season four. By the time I show up to things, they fail. I turn on the Ranger game, they give up five goals in the course of me watching it for the 10 minutes or whatever the hell it was. Every time I turn on baseball playoffs and I'm rooting for the team, the team I want to lose always wins. It's the same with Comic-Con. I'm going to finally afford, I'm going to finally find myself where I'm able to afford it and have those days off. And it's going to be the year when I, the year I go in like 2020 or 2021, people are going to be like, oh, Comic-Con's so Oh, like not even cool anymore, and there's gonna be, everyone's gonna be going to like Nerd HQ and shit, and it's gonna be totally different. Here's the thing: when I was a child, and I was growing up, and I was getting older, things like comic books and board games and and tabletop games and stuff like that and Pokemon and all that all that stuff I it was communicated to me that in order to get girls that stuff would need to be not a part of my life anymore that's just a part of growing up as you mature and you grow out of things like you know childish things like comic book fantasies and you know games and stuff like that little did I know that I'm almost 30 And all these nerds, all the girls who were nerdy and gross looking in fucking school are fucking hot. And I'm not nerdy enough to be able to hold a conversation with them because I stopped reading Batman comics in 1996 because I was told that that's what I needed to do to get sex. Now why is it that every hot girl who lives in New York C- in the New York City area was at the Javits Center over the weekend wearing nothing? It doesn't make any sense to me. It's not fair. Everything, every path I've taken in life, I, got, I was supposed to go the other way. I went left when I was supposed to go right. I went up when I was supposed to go down. It doesn't make any sense. 
doesn't make any sense. I like Batman. I like Superman. I love that shit. X-Men, I used to read comic books. I gotta tell you, I got boxes and boxes of comic... I have thousands of comic books in this house. Me and my dad used to take me to the comic book store all the time. We've got those big cardboard boxes that you buy from the comic book store to store your comics. I've got untouched comics, probably thousands and thousands of dollars worth of comics. When Superman died, I got that. We used to go, there was a Toys R Us on Newdorp Lane here in Staten, on Highland Boulevard here in Staten Island. They used to have these Pokemon, like, card games every Sunday morning or Saturday morning. I forgot which one it was. We used to go there. Yeah, we used to steal kids' holograms and shit. But besides that, we used to go there to trade cards and stuff like that. But then we stopped going because we wanted to have girlfriends. Because that's what society told us to do. You can't change the rules. Just like me being skinny now. Now that I'm skinny and I get my beard taped up, girls like fat bearded kids. Fuck that. That's bullshit. The rules of society just change all of a sudden. And I have to adapt. I have to adapt, adjust, and overcome. Oh, and I'm I'm sexist. Oh, Jay. Jay, you're such you're so anti feminism. All you want to do is go gawk at women at comic No, that's not true. I'm looking at my Twitter feed. I'm looking at my Instagram. All of the all of the women who are hot also are in, tend to be have an intellectually tend to be intellectually superior than most women I've run into in my life. They like similar music, they do similar things. And it doesn't hurt that they're attractive, and it doesn't hurt that when they go to Comic-Con they wear something hot. You can't change the rules. When we were growing up, we were told, you know, don't do this. And I'm not I'm not sitting here bashing the nerd culture. I like it. I wish I was a part of it. But if I tried to be a part of it, like if I went to Comic-Con, I have a feeling I'd be looked at as a fucking like a noob or a fucking poser, you know, like the guys who turn vegan, like the gluten-free people, gluten-free for fashion. They're gluten-free because it's it's cool. It's hip. Little do you know you actually need gluten. If you're not if you don't have a gluten allergy, you need gluten. Don't be an idiot. Like if I if I would have I would have just stuck with reading comic books. Why'd I stop? Because I wanted to smoke weed and meet girls. And no, it, one didn't come before the other. They were the same. I started hanging out with my older friends, and we started hanging out with girls. And when we hung out with girls when we were 13, when we hung out with girls, well, I was actually 10, they were 13. But from the years from 10 on, like, you don't meet up with girls and read comic books. You don't meet up with girls and play Pokemon cards. So why are there, and not only attractive girls, dangerously attractive girls, the types of girls that I see pictures of, and I don't even think that life is fair anymore. It's one thing to be attractive. Sometimes I see pictures and I'm just like, oh, fuck, that's not even fair. Like, it's not even real life. It can't be real life. I'd probably be smarter if I read comic books. At least I'd be reading. But I stopped to try to acquire girls. And what happened? Well, acquiring girls didn't happen. That's a fact. And it's not fair. And it's bullshit. I wish I could have went to Comic-Con. I'm sorry that you were in a co- Like, most of the costumes, I don't get. I don't know who they are, because I didn't follow this cartoon long enough, because I stopped watching cartoons that were for children because that's what I was told to do. That's what society dictated to me. When you grow up, you grow out of these things. Now, 
there are there are thousands of girls that would line up to suck Will Wheaton's penis. I swear, they would. And you know, Will Wheaton's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. I like following him on Twitter. I like him on the Big Bang Theory. He's a cool guy. But it's just weird how how that works. I always had this dream of moving to California. I'd never make it in California. Are you kidding? I don't play tabletop games. Not because I don't like to, but because I was never trained in the craft of doing it with more than Pokemon cards, because that's what we were we were told that Dungeons and Dragons was wasn't cool. I didn't know that I was gonna meet hot girls who like that later in life. If I knew that, I would have stuck with it. Because now I'm alone every day. And it's sad. And it pisses me off. Because I'm cool as fuck and I do a lot of cool shit. Not cool enough. Where's my coffee? God. You have no idea how many comic books I have in this house. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Like, it's like, do you even lift, bro? It's like that meme. But it's like, do you even play games, bro? No, I was just... Like, it's the same thing... If I pretended to be a quote-unquote nerd, then that would be the same as me... Like, how I say I don't like to pretend to be something else to girls. I just tell them how it is. And if they like it, they like it. And if not, it's okay. I'm not gonna... Like... All my profiles on dating websites, I don't sit there and write things that I think are going to make girls message me. I sit there and write things that are the truth. And if you want to read the truth and then hit me up, that's fine. That's the same thing as if, if I was just, if I pretended to be a nerd. I'm not pretending to be anything. I'm saying that I could have been a nerd. I was on track to be a nerd. But society stopped me. Society told me that it is not cool. Society told me that girls don't like that. Boy, were they mistaken. More gr There's probably more girls on that want to have sex with Will Wheaton than want to have sex with Joe Budden. And if you follow Joe Budden on Twitter, this guy's a serious thought. It saddens me. It saddens me. What else is going on? New music? People listening to new music? Christina Rock's got, you could st stream a six song live session from Temples. Oh boy. So I'm I'm sorry that I'm just so mad about the nerd culture that I left because I tried to get girls and now I'm alone. Like I can be nerdy about things, but I'm so I mean like Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I making sense? I mean, is it is it me? Is this me being stupid? I mean, I know I'm not the smartest guy. I know I never finished my associates, although I'm about 15 credits away, and I'm going to try to go back to school. But I really wish that I was... That someone would have told me. Someone would have... Like, you ever see those... You ever see TV shows, and I know my life isn't a TV show, but have you ever seen the TV shows where they bring the... Per like, they bring one of the characters to the future and show them how things are going to be? If someone would have showed me this, would have showed me this, like a, a picture of my room, me sitting here right now, I gotta tell you, I would have taken a different path. Now, I love doing the podcast. I would hope that the podcast would still be in the future if I was a happier guy, but I probably wouldn't have as many things to complain about. Feeling good on a Wednesday with sparkling thoughts even though it's Tuesday. All right. I got to have more coffee.
and go to work, unfortunately. So I'm going to give you the list of websites you need to go to to help keep me in business before I get up on out of here. And as always, you go to ConsecConfessions.com for all your live music news and reviews for the fans, by the fans, click the Amazon ads, buy stuff, leave comments, and if you go to a show, join our family. Trust me, it's fun. Fun times had by all. Also, you can go to TheAndyDeerShow.com for this, which is the sultry caramel voice of the Jay Pork's experience. You can also get the Tyler Kale show rocking. You could also get the flagship show, the Andy Deer show. And you can click his ads too. There are Amazon ads. You got Uncle Bub's barbecue. There's a record store he's got that he advertises for. A lot of stuff going on. Check him out. You can listen to Christina Rocks Every Sunday morning at 89xradio.com. And you can check her out at ChristinaRocks.com. Hang the DJ. That's Christina with no H. And every week, every single week, the headlines are powered by Any Quiet. Till next time, Whiskey Weed and Warren Zevon. Late. This has been the Jay Parks Experience. Thank you so much for listening.